It's always interesting playing like with voice, like playing with someone with voice rather, mm -hmm. not myself with voice. Um, there's such a, like a visceral quality to it, and I think in this kind of context, like with live sampling with it, like it becomes like a hyper grotesque because I think like the voice and like a lot of the stuff you do is it becomes it's already in that ballpark, and then I think like with some of this stretching it and pulling it, it becomes like like meta aware in a weird like surrealish way which is kind of interesting like we've not played together and we've only played together once before like not with this kind of setup so it's you know that's part of what's happening as well but it's interesting to kind of for me to swim in that world mm -hmm. like, with the, the sounds and kind of what's happening there like i don't know what's like your experience of, of that i've only worked with a few people before that have done live processing. I have a new project actually with a Mexican sound artist, Hugo Skinka, and we've started working together about a year ago, and he does like very like simple live processing, and it's all like stuff he's programmed with Max MSP. Mm. And it, but it's very, um, it's very delicate. So basically, if I stop sound, mm. the sound that he does does not last for very long. It's sort of always, it's a little bit like a, it's not a, I don't even know, I don't know how to describe what he's doing. I have no idea what he's doing. Mm. Um, but it's kind of cool because 
it is a kind of uh, it's like making me more than myself mm. and then depending how on how somebody is doing it then I feel like I'm surrounded by myself yeah <laughs> and in different ways that I wouldn't think or maybe are, are not even physically possible yeah, yeah. I mean for my for the way that I work with a voice it's it's uh, trying to achieve as much as I can in my own physical boundaries mm. so that's kind of I'm always in this kind of kind of approach to saying how how far can I push it how much more can I how much more can I do how much more can I replicate for myself without the aid of uh, of electronic enhancement I mean I use amplification yeah. that already is something else mm. um, but it's interesting I mean I've yeah I've done not done it super a lot I think another guy I used to do a little bit more with was Robert von Hoyman mm, yeah. from Stein I mean years ago um, and he did it com in a completely different way. It was much more, he, he used a lot of his own sounds also. Who was only using my sound? Yeah. So, it, yeah, it's interesting. And it's also interesting how you, how you say the word grotesque. Because it's, <laughs> a, it's like, it's very eye of beholder, right? So yeah, yeah. A lot of the sounds I don't find are, are very grotesque. They're just sounds. Yeah, I mean, I don't mean right? grotesque in like gross, yeah. kind yeah, of like, I mean yeah. grotesque in like, like sort of an art sense and like yeah. like extreme yeah like like capital g grotesque i guess like, but it sounds more extreme because it's coming from a human yeah exactly like where there's like uh, something about that that like you as a listener um, are forced to empathize with yeah like when you hear like very strange sounds that are not vocally produced it's like yeah. it could be anything but like when it's coming from a human you're like i have that not the same apparatus but yeah. i have that apparatus so it's like <gasps> What, what has happened, you know? Yeah, like, yeah, this is yeah. kind of like weird appreciation association yeah, yeah. kind of thing. It's true. Yeah, which is, yeah, it's interesting. And in this context as well, because, like as you're saying, like you push it very far. Mm -hmm. And like with, uh, it's always a funny thing for me when I play with this because it's so ergonomically efficient. Like it's this tight thing. It doesn't require much gesture. And I'm not a super gestural player anyways, but like there isn't much for me to do. So I to just kind of like close my eyes and kind of just sink into the sound. Yeah. Um, but I'm like here, and I'm like, oh man, like, yeah, I've got this cool spot, and I'm kind of working with it, and then I kind of like crack my eyes open, and I'm like, wait a second, no, that's that's you still. I'm I'm doing mm -hmm. like my sound yeah, yeah, okay. was a different sound. Whereas yeah, yeah, like yeah, I yeah. thought I was like what you were doing sounded so not artificial, but it sounded yeah. like not what I was expecting it to be. So I was I was somewhere else with it, which was kind of interesting to play. Yeah. And even like the like when I generally play with an instrument, for me like the act of dialogue is very large in improv. Yeah. Whereas in this kind of context, like the, the way the software is set up, there is no other sound but you. Like everything is just input okay, and then processed in, in varyingly degree, varying degrees of extremity. Um, but there's like a, an intrinsically non-dialogical -dialogic, dialogical um, thing to it that nothing will happen until you do something. Okay. But at the same time, I don't want to have it just be like a call and response, which I think can be like structurally um, uninteresting after a certain amount of time. If it's just like, blah, and I'm like, blah, blah, blah. like that, that becomes uh, the call and response is also a two way street, right? So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But like the, there's something about that, like a binary structure where it's like this, that, this, that, this, that, this, that, which for me, like can drag after a while. So for yeah. me, like there's a lot of, even though it is completely dependent on input, trying to not to avoid that sort of flip-flop, flip-flop and have, yeah. have material that's like stored away and sort of going in trajectories and trying to have a dialogue but with things that have only just happened. Which right. or, is, or in a duo context, really, it's like you're having a dialogue but what's, the, what dif what's different is that it's not like a conversation exactly hmm. because sometimes I'm ignoring you. Yeah, yeah. Right? which is, I think, which <laughs> yeah. is for me, like even like in, in like a, an improv sense, which is a, a big part of why I like I like doing solo stuff a lot and then mm -hmm. duo stuff mm -hmm. and then trio and it sort of it diminishes my interest the larger it gets and I think yeah. part of what I like about duo is that and that we can have conflict like yeah. you could be doing a thing and I could be doing uh, either not with you or against you or, or you know, like there's yeah. varying degrees that can be set up just because there's two of us yeah. if it's three people and I'm playing against you and then there's another person and then they join me the, the dynamics yeah. shift around whereas like with this it could be very clearly antagonistic or very clearly parallel or very yeah. clearly like these other things which is yeah it's a very interesting thing to play with mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. yeah should we make a little bit more sound sure <laughs> Good baby.
Mm-hmm. 